Hey gang, today we're going to do an example of the big guitar ending. Uh, the example that we're taking is Eric Clapton's, or rather Cream's, uh, ending of Sitting on Top of the World from their Goodbye album. Eric Clapton, of course, playing guitar on it. Now, this is a good example of one. Well, first of all, this is by request, and I like taking requests, but I'm going to be honest here. Uh, this is not one of my favorite things uh, that guitars do. I've always thought it's a bit uh, showing off, and not just that, it's a bit self-indulgent and not all that interesting in general. Um, and number two, it's really a pain in the butt to do it with a backing track because, of course, it's meant to be very freeform. And so all the different guitar manipulations, uh, when you're doing them with a backing track, you got to count them all out. And I guarantee on stage you're just doing it and feeling it in the moment, right? And you're looking for the rest of the band to do it. Actually makes it a lot easier. Anyway, uh, that said, this one in particular I think is an actual good example of it. It's not too long and not too self-indulgent. Uh, it was pretty common back then, and this is one of the more, better ones and more influential ones. Uh, there's some longer ones. Jimi Hendrix, my all-time favorite player, uh, and Woodstock, Purple Haze. Man, he goes off on some really long ones. Uh, and, of course, you know, the break to Heartbreaker is largely uh, a freeform guitar solo as well. Uh, it's not the ending, of course. Two of my favorites, though, are, and I think our better examples, are Peter Frampton's ending to Do You Feel Like We Do, both on the studio, but especially on the live album. Why? Because it's interesting. He modulates at the very end. He changes the key. Very interesting. When the band comes in, it changes the key at the very end. I think that's kind of cool. And then my all-time favorite example is Prince's Let's Go Crazy. Just a great thing how he hits that one note and he's stomping just lightly on, I think it's he's just... Uh, going through a, uh, the wah pedal, and then he goes into the whole thing, and it's really cool. Uh, anyway, those are my two favorites for what it's worth. This, however, is a good one, and despite the fact that I'm upset, <laughs> thank you, Frank, for requesting it. Uh, I needed to do this. Okay, uh, we're going to go over this note for note. I got the tab even, which is a stretch for this kind of thing, but I got the tab, and I... Uh, Hey, if you like this one, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, subscribe for one of these every week. We'll see you in just a second. All right, gang. Let's go over this now note for note. First things first, you can download the tab from the link in the description. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Second thing is, let's talk a little bit about the sound. So I'm using a humbucker guitar. This happened to be a PRS. And I'm not playing out of the bridge, which I normally would for lead. I'm playing out of the neck. Just to give it a thicker sound that, I, to me, I associate more with Clapton and Cream. Heavier sort of sound. Now, I've also got a decent amount of gain on it. And I've got, uh, the kicker, I think, is I've got a distortion pedal that I have the gain set as low as possible on. And that just kind of gives me a kick on the sustain. All right, I've got a tiny amount or a decent amount of reverb on it, and that's it. Now I should also say that for the recording, what I did to try and get more of a live sounding thing instead of miking the amp, what I did was I mic the room. Um, so for what it's worth, that's what I tried to do. If it made it sound more live to you, great for me. If it didn't, try to ignore it okay anyway you can do what you want to on the sound that's what I was doing to try and get that Clapton-esque sound that I, I associate with cream as a real thick sound um, so first let's go over the entire solo and then we'll go through it line by line I'll give you an idea of what's freeform and what's not um, this solo can be thought of mostly as over a G minor pentatonic the song is in G blues uh, so G minor pentatonic is going to work really well uh, the exception are the pickup notes, which you can think of as playing over major chords, G and C. All right. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to start here on the third position, mea uh, meander up to the eighth position, do the bulk of it in the 15th, and end up somewhere around the 10th. Okay, just to give you an idea of the navigation. So we're going to start out here on the third string, fourth fret. Here we go. <laughs>
let's go through it line by line. So here's the first line. Pretty straightforward line. These are just pickup notes, right? That's over a turnaround G to C. And it basically just outlines those chords, okay? You're going to slide up to the fourth, uh, on the third string, fourth fret, which is the third of G. It's a B, right? Then play the D that's on the third uh, fret of the second string, end up on the C, which is the fifth fret of the third string. Can't play more chord tones than all of them. Okay, here's the next part. Okay, pretty straightforward as well. We're going to slide up to the th uh, ninth fret on the third string. And then on the second string, we're going to play 8, 10, bend it up a half step, bring it down to 10, pull it off to 8, and then play the ninth on the third again. Again, you've heard that sound a zillion times probably, that major bluesy sound. Okay, so here begins the solo or the free break itself, and I'll try and give you a, a good vantage point here. Let me kind of even scoot in a bit. So um, we're going to anchor our finger. So this is the line, okay, that, I, that we're going to learn. That's it, okay? And it's pretty easy to get fast once, uh, once you get it, but uh, getting it down is kind of important. So the first one we're going to start out with, this is all, almost all on the second string. We're going to take the 20th fret, let's see, 15, 17, 18, 20, yeah, 20th fret <laughs> on the second string and pull it off to the 15th. Okay? Now I'm doing it up here. You can obviously do it other places as well. Like you can, you can do it down here on the first string, but then you have to stretch more. So I like doing this one because I don't have time. I don't have uh, super giant hands. So, all right. So, twenty pull off to to fifteen. Then eighteen pull off to fifteen. And then we're going to play seventeen on the third. And then two strokes of fifteen. So that's the first time through. Okay, all the rest of the times through, you're simply going to play 18, pull off to 15, 17 on the third, and then two strokes on the 15th on the second. All right? All right, that's it. Once you get it down... It's not that hard to do, uh, but do play it slowly, and it's that, that cadence. The hard part about this is the two, is the little stutter step um, where you're playing the 15th on the second twice. All right, so that's it, and you play that until you're tired, okay? If you're playing it with a real band, you just play it until you're tired, right? And you got the, you got the audience enwrapped. You just kind of play it. I think on the record, he plays it five, or on the, this particular concert, he played it five times, and then he did the rest of it. And clearly, the band is just waiting for him to finish, okay? So if, if you're playing it on stage with a band, just look at your bandmates when you're ready to end it, all right? And, and have a little taste. Don't go too long. All right. So here's the next line. Um, we're going to come out of that with a big bend. And give that lots of vibrato, okay? So that's all that is, is a bend on the 18th fret, second string. Bend that up. Oops, let me try that again. And then give it some vibrato, all right? And then we do this. Pretty straightforward, that. That's just a blues scale thing, right? So we're going to bend up on the 18th, then play the 18th on the second. Then the 15th on the second. And then on the third, we're going to play the 17th, bend it up a whole step. Then play the 17th. And then play 15, 17. And then 15, end up on the 17th on the fourth. Wow, that was a mouthful. It's easier to play than to say. All right. And then... 
The last part is this. Very cool line, I think. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay on the fourth string. We're going to hit it on the 17th fret and slide down all the way to the 10th. And hang on that a little bit, okay? Now we're going to pull off to the 8th. And then play 10, pull off 8, 10 on the, f on the 5th. So it sounds like this. Okay, and then on the 4th, again, we're going to play 8, 10. And the 10, we're going to bend up a whole step and cut it off at the end. And then 8th, we're going to play and bend that up a half step. Now, it sounds okay to just play the note itself. That'd be the Hendrix sounding thing, but Clapton bent it up a half step. Very cool. It's kind of that, I don't know, just a little off-key thing that just sounds so good in the blues sometimes. And to me, it sounds great. Okay, and then finally... All right, so what those two chords are... It's actually, you can think of it as, you know, the ending is really just a blues ending where we're going to, uh, the chord itself we're going to end on is a G7, essentially. And we're just approaching it from one step above. But instead of just playing a G7, we're going to play something kind of interesting. We're going to play the Hendrix chord, but we're going to play it in G. So we'll go from G sharp to G. Now the Hendrix chord I think is technically called a G7 sharp 9, right? So um, let's kind of let's kind of go over that. So you can think of the root here for the G sharp 7 sharp 9 would be the um, the 11th fret on the 5th string here. So we've got on 4, 3, 2, on, on, I'm sorry, on 5, 4, 3, 2 we've got 11, 10, 11, and then 12. And of course, we just are going to bring that down a half step, which is one fret. So we end up with 10, uh, 9, 10, and 11. And of course, we're going to brush that kind of. And look for the rest of the band. When are you going to end this? Okay, now, now, nope, now, okay. All right. So um, I've, what I've got written out on the tab is just strings 4, 3, and 2 for that because if you notice, and I think this is what at least what my ears pick up, Clapton isn't hitting the root on there because Jack Bruce is playing all over the roots, okay? And you know, he's a pretty dang good uh, uh, bass player, so he's got that going. So all you really need to do is just play those 4, 3, 2 strings and that. So, um, anyway, that's it. Well, there you have it, gang. Probably the shortest example of this self-indulgent guitar <laughs> big ending. It's a really good example of it. Eric Clapton's and uh, outro solo to Sitting on Top of the World uh, from the Goodbye album uh, live. All right, till next time, we'll see you on Down the Road. <laughs>